Hello and welcome to another review for Film and Game Composers. I'm your host, Mina Shamali, and in this series of videos, I'll be taking you through Stress Off Sampling's Aleatoric Modular Series Brass. So, this is what it looks like, and what it is, if we look at the product page, is a user-guided aleatoric orchestral sample library series. Uh, so this obviously focuses on the brass section, and... I don't know if they have any plans to do the other sections, but for now, this is what we've got and this is what we'll focus on. So it's been designed by US composer Casey Edwards, who's also designed uh, Stress All Sampling's Oracle, which is about modern sound design and hybrid production. So check that out and check out our review of it. And uh, it's produced and distributed by Stress All Sampling. So what it is, Aleatoric obviously here focuses on orchestral sound effects, things that are less about, you know, melody and harmony and standard articulations. Uh, they're more about atmosphere and usually stuff that's unsettling. And probably the kind of stuff you'll hear in a lot of kind of specifically horror, uh, where it's all about atmosphere. And uh, we'll, we'll get it. We'll have a listen to out sounds throughout the review. Uh, we, we've had uh, libraries like this that focus on, focus on, or at least offer uh, these kinds of effects. So this is not not a new thing. Uh, so like we've had stuff from Project Sam Symphobia. I've got uh, stuff from Spitfire, from Orchestral Tools, and ADO, and it's all there. I suppose the difference here seems to be the intention that the focus is to make it as user guided as possible, uh, which can be a bit different because in a lot of library standard. You get you get an effect that you can sort of control some aspects of it, but most of the time you're stuck with what it does, you know, uh, which makes it a little less flexible. It may be great and well recorded and that kind of thing, but eventually when everyone starts using it uh, and using these same effects, you start hearing it all over the place, uh, which has been the case with the Symphobia stuff for, uh, for the last few years. You've been hearing it all over trailers and all over that, all over video games and that kind of thing, but with the focus here being user guided uh, stuff, it can it can uh, be a very interesting and different take on it, and uh, we'll have a look at that. So this comes as a bundle, uh, which sells for two hundred seventy nine dollars. The bundle comprises three different libraries, uh, which can all be purchased individually if you'd like. Uh, so you got the French horns, you got the little brass, the low brass, and then you got the trumpets, and this modular approach means that you don't have to buy anything you don't want to. Obviously, if you buy three of them individually at some point, uh, they'll all add up to $330. These are actually the bundle prices, but the individual prices are in the separate product pages. But, you know, if you buy them as a bundle, you get a bit, of, quite a bit of a discount, which is pretty cool. So $279 for an entire, uh, or you know, brass section effects. Is it worth it? We'll have a look. We'll ha you will have a listen, and you can judge that for yourself. So... Yeah, uh, so we'll just have a quick look at these specs before we listen to how it sounds. Uh, now, this requires the full version of Native Instruments Contact 4 or higher. So this won't work in the Contact Free player, uh, the free Contact player. Uh, so, you know, requires the full version. So get the full version if you don't have it, and you you will thank me later. <laughs> and uh, th these specs are similar across most of the libraries. It's got everything recorded as either normal or like, you know, normal unmuted and then muted or stopped or using Harmon notes or whatever, Harmon mutes. And you, then this, this might be the key thing. You guide your dynamics and variation via mod wheel or any CC of your choice. So this is where, where, where the selling point I think is. And we'll be having a look at that. So you get four dynamics on most patches. I think it's the same across the board. And, you know, those are the ones you can control, uh, among other things. And you get four different mic positions, which are close, deck, a tree, out triggers, and balcony, plus a mixed down mic uh, position, which is, you know, a uh, combination of all all four. Uh, it's recorded in a worn dry hall, uh, which is actually the Sophia Session Orchestra Hall, uh, which where they, that's where they've recorded most of their other libraries, uh, which means they'll mix in well enough and because it's, it's, you know, more of a dry haul, it will mix in a little better or a little easier with a lot of other things. So it's still got a haul sound, except it's not, you know, it's not like Spitfire's air 
Air Studios, which has got a really lush kind of sound. Uh, or I suppose a smeary kind of sound. I don't know. Uh, and uh, obviously the it's perfect for scoring trailers, games, and film, especially horror and tension writing, which is that's that's their claim. And you know, we'll we'll that's usually what these kinds of things are uh, designed for, and we'll uh, check that out. All right. So uh, I'm not sure why the video demo isn't showing here, but you can check out their YouTube channel over here, uh, which shows up. So they have uh, a whole playlist of Aleatoric. Uh, Aleatoric Brass, uh, where Casey walks you through what's going on with the patches. Uh, so yeah, and the interface. So we'll have a look at it over here. So we've got Contact 5 open. Uh, I've got the latest version, which I think is like 5.4 or something. And uh, as we said, it won't show up in the Libraries tab because it's a full contact library. Uh, you have to get it from the Files tab or the Quick Load Browser. So installation is actually uh, pretty simple because you get a bunch of RAR files which you can extract and then put them and then just point contact to them. Uh, or you also they also have their own installer which I haven't used, uh, but reportedly it's 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 pretty well done. Uh, one of other reviewers has checked it out and it's like yep, yeah, pretty simple, does the job. So I can't comment on that, but uh, apparently it's good. So uh, I've just used the manual links and. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look at it. So this is the interface over here. And uh, first, let's have a look at the mic positions uh, over here. So you've got closed, decatree, outrigger, balcony, and full, which is the mixed down version. And in this in this patch, I've just got one of the horns, patch loaded, po horns patches loaded. And uh, it's got the decatree uh, loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them all on. And I'm going to solo and... Uh, you know, solo and, and mute and uh, audition them all. It's, it's taking a bit of time to load. See here, you've got the solo and mute. So I've just, I'm just going to load up one of these articulations. I quite like the trills and the flutter bends. And this is the articulation window while it loads up, by the way. It takes a bit of while to load up, but then I don't have SSDs or anything. So <laughs> uh, yeah, my system needs to be updated sometimes. So, yeah. so now I've got the full thing. So if you've got all five sections here, it's loaded up at 2.7 gigabytes. I've got enough RAM to cover that, so I'm cool. Uh, so here's the decatree, which is the standard, the default articulate, the default mic. So it sounds like uh, you can get the close articulation here. So as you can tell, it's quite a bit more in your face. Outrigger, which is, I think, the same as Decatree, but a, a lot wider. So it's about the same thing, but it's a lot wider. And Balcony, uh, which is obviously a bit from above, is what it sounds like. Which is interesting. It's kind of It kind of feels closer than the... Uh, than the decatree. If you have a listen to here. And the balcony sounds a bit closer. So it's a pretty interesting sound. I really like that. And this is what it sounds like when it's fully mixed down. Which is a pretty good sound. I, I quite like it. Uh, and if you just, what I'll do is like maybe just to get you a real perspective on the differences is I'll just uh, play one articulation and then just keep muting the, sorry, soloing the different mics. So play it over here. So obviously you can mix them, mix them and match them however you like. So if we just turn off the full and maybe start off with the close. So I start off with the decatree as a def default kind of sound. And then maybe give it a bit width, a bit of width. And then maybe a bit, a bit of balcony. And a bit more definition with the close. 
I feel like the balcony has more definition, at least in the horns patch. But, you know, uh, this is the cool thing. is like I can really define the sound however I want. Uh, so the balcony has more definition, but it's wider. But close has more definition, but a little more, bit more centered. And here you can actually uh, pen each of them as you'd like. So say, for example, we get the deck tree. Uh, at the center, but we get the close more t like to the extreme left, just to make it extreme. So it kind of makes the whole thing kind of shift left, or if you make it even just put them in different sides. <laughs> so yeah, so you can do whatever you want, and we'll just reset them, and reset everything and uh, turn it back to the actually let's put in the f the full one the full mixed patch i like it it's just gives you a bit best of everything and i suppose that's a really good thing way to work is just work with mixed down position and then when you get to mixing unless mixing is part of the part of the process you're going for which is a different story so yeah um uh uh, so let's change the articulation. So this is the articulation window, which I'll get into last, but we can change the articulation from here or from using key switches. Uh, but I'll just change it to flutter bands. Actually, that nah, trills. Keep it on trills. I like it. So the next thing I want to look at is this little section over here, which is a kind of a positioner, a stage positioner, and... Uh, it controls Terry with, and you can also control uh, an extra um, ER and, and sorry, early reflection and reverb and that kind of thing from within the box. So that's pretty cool that it's actually offered as an option. So this, this we'll start with this. This is, the, this is pretty cool. It just kind of, I'll just play it and then position it in different parts of the stage, right? <laughs> So this way we're positioning it further back. And then it can position left and right. So this is like dead on center. And then like one of the corners afterwards. So that's pretty cool. And then you can actually control this terrier width over here. Uh, this really messed with me because it's, this is one of the things that's really weird, is it's horizontal, except to actually change it, you have to move vertically. So I, I it messed with me for a while, and then I realized, oh, you can do this. So if you put it at center over here and then change the stereo width. So, you know, you can really mess with it. And so there's a lot of scope of really placing the sound and, and putting it as you will, just from the mic positions and the stage positioning thing. Now, we've also got hall which seems to have an early reflection and a uh, an early reflection and a tail. So if I just so just put it back in the center, uh, just keep the tail on. So I'll put the, this down. You know, actually I'll put it all down. So this is what it sounds like without it. When you let go, that's kind of where you hear it. So this is just kind of for when you let go. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, IRs, so you can make it really short. Or, you know, the longest is here. And then you get the uh, tail, which is the rest of the hall. Uh, it's a small stage sounds like this. You can completely bypass it here if you want. But that means you can have a lot of control from within the box and then if you want, you can start processing it with uh, with external effects. So yeah, so that's that's already like that's a lot a lot of stuff that's pretty cool, right? There's a lot of control over there. Uh, let's just reload that article that articulation sort of back to the beginning, uh, and actually I'll just keep it on full. Uh, so what else do we have? We've got the high pass and low pass filters, which are pretty cool for a quick control. Because uh, now sometimes you might feel that it's a little too bright, or it's uh, there's a few extraneous noises which you can take care of with the low pass filter. So 
So it's pretty smooth. And you can also help push it back if you need to. High pass, obviously, if you want to control some of the some of those lows. Put them down here. So this helps with mixing, you know, quick mixing, do a bit of high pass, low pass, stage, all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of really cool mixing stuff. Uh, so yeah, so finally we have the articulations browser over here. And this is the same across, uh, this, the, all of this, this interface is the same across the entire uh, series, uh, all libraries. So uh, this is, most of them are loaded up by default with all the effects and uh, you have 12 possible articulations and you can load them however you please. So see, for example, here we've got an empty one, which corresponds to the, you can control it. See, I've got it controlled by keys over here, which I'm pressing. Uh, so this empty one, for example, uh, say I want to load something different. I'll just load, it, load up like one of these back here. Go standard and, and then choose whether it's normal or muted and then lit bends. And then we've got lit bends again. <laughs> uh, and then here you can just empty it again. And if you'll notice, you've also got standard and mix. So we'll look at, we'll mix mixed in a minute, but standard uh, also has sustains, cluster split and rips and falls, which are not part of the, uh, so you can cancel here, which are not part of the default offering. So sometimes if you, if you haven't looked through it, you might miss it, which I did actually <laughs> kind of missed it the first time, first time around. But uh, on top of that, you can actually put in sustains. So, we got some sustains recorded here. So this is some pretty cool stuff. So you can just mix it in uh, with some of the other stuff. So you got, say, trills. And then back to sustains. You know, if, if you need. And, and like, that's pretty cool. That you can do that. I kind of wish that maybe at least the sustains were also loaded up by default, but I suppose if you didn't know that there was something empty, you might not realize that you can replace it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll have so this is we've got obviously sustains over here, and you can get some muted sustains, which I'll put them over here, standard, uh, stopped over here, and you can go sustains. <laughs> Now, stressful sampling also have uh, some like brass libraries that are standard with the standard articulations with legatos and all that kind of stuff. So that's a separate offering, but it's all recorded in the same hall. So it's you can use this whole thing together as an extension. Uh, but then you you still got your standard sustains, which is pretty cool. Now you've also got some rips and falls. Uh, which kind of actually before I do that, let me just like these are these are some of the standard these articulations that come standard. So lip bends and flutter, flutter bends. We got trills, we got jitters, we got flurries, and we got stopped versions of all these. So they're all there, they're all pretty cool. You can also load up rips and falls. Uh, so the mod wheel kind of controls whether they fall or whether they rise. Let's put this down. Uh, and so, uh, so that's that's pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, now you can also do have stopped versions of those and we'll go through those uh, with the individual libraries but you've also got mixed articulations so what you can do is you can mix two different articulations and crossfade between them using cc2 so over here say for example i start off with i want to start off with uh lip bends and finish off with flurries so here you got bends flurries and uh what I'll do is I'll just assign a different uh, part of my keyboard. So say I'll assign 22, which I have a controller here, to CC2, because CC2 is uh, the 
the control for, for the crossfade. So we'll start off with bends. So I'll put it up a little bit more. So we start off with bends. So obviously you can't see what I'm moving, but that I rest assured I am moving uh, this controller. And you can do that with anything. Uh, so say we empty that and, but obviously you can only do it if they're, uh, sorry, that's not me. I was meant to do mixed. Uh, you can only do it if they're both muted or both unmuted because that's what naturally would happen. I, I don't know if, if people would like to be able to crossfade it from muted into unmuted or vice versa. Uh, but if they have an issue, they can take it up. I don't, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, but yeah, so you got, for example, trills into jitters. Let me start it for here. So obviously there's a lot of user control. So it's not just the dynamics with the mod wheel. You can, so say for example, like dynamics over here. You can also control articulations into each other. And th that amount of control uh, is brilliant. And I don't think uh, a lot of other people have done, have been able to offer that. So the fact that these guys have focused on that and offered it, I think is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the other thing we want to see, which is available across all three libraries, is your cluster splits. Now, these are a little more complex. Uh, so, if I this is what it sounds like just with nothing. So it's just a sustain, right? All right. Now, if you want, what you can do, first you got a deviation and you got an extension. So deviation is your standard thing, and it's controlled by CC seventy one. You have to consult, like you might have to consult the manual or consult uh, Casey's videos about that. Uh, but there you go. So I've got CC seventy one mapped over here. So this is what it sounds like. So I'll just put this in the middle and play, and then I'll bring the deviation and you hear what it's doing. See what I mean? Try a different note. So this is whole pitch deviation, which is pretty cool. Now, on top of that, you can do an extension. So an extension, it's, I think this is a scripted extension. So you activate it over here. And see here it's for example, you get minus second up to perfect fifth, which is pretty cool. So minus second, which is one semitone. Uh, now the way this works is you play the deviation and then you can put the extension on top of that. So play that the deviation. So first standard and then deviation, then extension. See what I mean? And if we maybe put it back up to perfect fifth. Oh, yeah, perfect fifth. So it's like. So. If you do it more free, more extreme, you might realize that this is a lot of pitch shifting happening. So you might want to do it slowly. So you can obviously make 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 it that major third, just four semitones. Now the thing. I really like this. I like the fact that you can do this. And this is very reminiscent of the um, LA scoring strings, LA Torque stuff. Except I wish this was a little more independently controlled. Now, technically you are controlling it independently, but the extension doesn't come in unless you have the deviation. I kind of wish you could do the extension separately, if you know what I mean. So right now, if I do extension, nada, nothing. But I have to go 
deviation. So it kind of locks you into a particular thing. So you deviate, you extend from the deviation, not necessarily from what you're playing, which I wish you could do. Well, and maybe that's a suggestion for the update in the future. Uh, like that's one of the things that, that I was thinking, you know, I really wish that would have existed. However, like the fact that we had, we've got, we've been able to go this far is pretty fantastic. So I'm not necessarily complaining. I'm thinking, is there a way we can do this? And maybe, maybe the guys have actually thought about this and it's been a little harder. I don't know how to script any of this. So, <laughs> you know, I'm speaking from a position of privilege. Uh, it's very hard to do that. Anyway, uh, so that's cluster splits and you can do that with uh, muted, uh, muted articulations as well. And uh, yeah, the last thing I want to talk about is the random start. So random start over here. Um, and if we just take it back to trails, uh, or actually take it back to something else because it's something where you'll hear it more. Uh, the random split is, sorry, random start is what it sounds like. So if I put it back at 0%, it's it'll start at the same position every time. I put it up a little bit and it'll start randomizing where I start. I go to 100%, it'll always start sounding different. Which is pretty cool. Uh, and, you know, makes the whole thing a lot more aleatoric, a lot more prone to chance, a lot more what will the players do every time, and th that can be different. However, I really wish there was also a controlled start where I can actually zoom into a particular part of the recording to start from every time. Because, you know, in the real world, if you're recording something, once you've recorded the, the players playing aleatoric stuff, it's there, it is what it is, you know. But... You know, if I, I wish that, that that ability were there so I can, you know, have it sound exactly exactly how I want it every time, given what I'm given. But that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the that's a suggestion and it's not not a not a deal breaker, but it's just just what I would have liked to see. Uh, like a standard offset. Uh, now obviously if you put it at zero percent, then you know it all starts the same. And that's the difference between the lights and the full patches. The light actually doesn't have the random start. So it's it's disabled by default, which means that, you know, it takes up a lot less RAM over here. Uh, so compare 18 or 19 megabytes almost to about half a gigabyte. Because obviously, to do the random start, it needs to load in the entire sample into RAM, so you can just access it straight away and cut into it straight away. Uh, with the light patches, it's streaming from a lot more from the disk, so I'd be like, hey, I, I know what I'm getting. I don't need to cut into a different part of the sample every time. It's the same part, so it's cool. So, you know, that can help uh, with RAM, but obviously you'll miss out on the random start, uh, which means you're locked into where wherever the sample starts. So yeah, so that is the interface. Um, what we'll be looking at next, we'll look at the individual libraries and uh, specifically each of their articulations and what you can do with them. And we'll take it from there. So I'll see you back for, uh, for part two.